Hello everyone, in this video we write a function to determine a pip value. A pip is the price move in a given exchange rate. The steps that we are going to follow are Step 1. Determine the number of quote currency each pip represents. Step 2. Calculate the number of base currency per pip. Step 3. Determine the total profit or loss of the trade. Example. Assume that a $300,000 trade involving the USD dollar Canadian dollar pair is closed at 1.0568 after gaining 20 pips. Calculate the profit in USD dollars. So the steps are Step 1. Multiply the amount of the trade by 1 pip. Step 2. Divide the number of Canadian dollar per pip from Step 1 by the closing exchange rate to arrive at the number of USD dollar per pip. Step 3. Multiply the number of pips gained by the value of each pip USD dollar from step 2 to arrive at the total loss profit for the trade. I took this information from the website OANDA. So, uh, as always, first I show you what the function does and then we write the function. So, I'm passing all this information to the function, so 300,000. Uh, the, the amount of trade, then we have the exchange rate, 20 is the movement in pips, and base is the base currency, in this case USD dollar. Let's run. And as you can see, the function returns total profit 567.75 uh, USD dollar. So let's write the function. So the function takes uh, five arguments, trade, amount of trade, EXR, closing exchange rate, PIP after trade, PIP gained or lost, base, uh, base currency is yen if the quote currency is in yen. So if is yen is equal to false, a PIP value is equal to 0 0.0001, else that is, if is yen is equal to true, a pip value is equal to 0 0.01. Then we implement the steps. Step 1. Multiply trade times pip. Step 2. Divide the result from step 1 by the exchange rate. Step 3. Multiply pip of the trade times the result of step 2. In this case, we are rounding the result to two decimals. If pip of the trade is greater than 0, we have a total profit. Else, that is, if pip up the trade is less than zero, we have a loss. And these are the information that finally are returned by the, by the function. So let's run together. And now I'm going to test with the other examples that are on that website. We have a profit here. This is a loss. Profit and we have a loss again. So, guys, this is the, the function. I hope that is useful that you can see the process how we can go from steps to write to code a function. And in the, in the description, I, I set the link to the same video but written in R so you can compare R and Python. I hope the video is useful and see you in the next video.